Shakespeare's Sonnets, an introduction. Shakespeare's extraordinary collection of 154 sonnets comprises one of the great glories of world literature. And yet, as with many other aspects of their author's life and work, much mystery surrounds them. They were first published in London in 1609, in a folio which contained not just the sonnets, but also the long poem, A Lover's Complaint. Shakespeare was by then in his mid-forties, and had already written most of the plays which had made him famous, but we know that more than ten years earlier he was circulating sugared sonnets among his private friends, and it is therefore reasonable to assume that the bulk of the sonnets were written during the 1590s. There were several serious outbreaks of plague in London during this period, and it is likely that Shakespeare took advantage of the free time resulting from the enforced closure of the theatres to work on his verse. The folio is dedicated to Mr. W. H., and literary scholars have propounded many theories as to the likely identity of the dedicatee, including William Herbert, the Earl of Pembroke, one William Hall, who had worked with the printer of the folio, and even the author William himself. There is, however, no general agreement, and we are unlikely ever to know for certain. The 154 sonnets fall clearly into three groups. The first 126 are addressed to a young man, sometimes known as the Fair Youth, and perhaps to be identified with W. H., and these often have a strong homoerotic undertow. They deal with love in all its aspects, initially urging the youth to marry and ensure his immortality through procreation, and later praising the power of poetry and love to ensure another kind of victory over death. In Sonnets 127 to 152, the focus shifts to the poet's seductive but faithless mistress, often referred to as the Dark Lady of the Sonnets, her darkness being clearly both physical and spiritual. These are of a more openly erotic character, and, as with the fair youth, many attempts have been made to identify her with a specific individual of Shakespeare's acquaintance. The final pair, numbers 153 and 154, deal with the god Cupid, and form a natural link to a lover's complaint, which followed them in the first folio. The structure of Shakespeare sonnets almost invariably follows the classic English sonnet format, fourteen lines in all, each line having ten syllables. These lines are divided into three groups of four with alternating rhymes, A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, and a final rhyming couplet, G, G. To use a musical metaphor, the opening four lines state the theme, the middle four develop the ideas, the third draw these ideas together, and the final two form a coda, or conclusion. The linking theme of love which runs through the sonnets enables Shakespeare to explore and meditate on the profoundest aspects of human relationships and experience, from overwhelming passion through doubt, fear, regret, jealousy and betrayal, to the transitory nature of life itself. This, it can be argued, is the only mystery which ultimately concerns us, and through Shakespeare's timeless verse, as resonant today as when written four centuries ago, we can each be helped towards a greater understanding of the human heart.